Jeez, nice timing on that. You gonna, you gonna get us kicked off? Yeah, let's go. Let's see. All right, Bill Pluck, Rich Source, 303. We're with the legendary Mike Riley, Boulder Iron Man 2019. And I just want to catch up with you. A lot's been going on, and I'd love to hear about your book and how that's going and what you're seeing here out here today. Life is good. I mean, I mean, the book's going very well, and and uh, besides being with my family, I'm on the happiest place at Earth, an Ironman. Right? Yep. And it travels around a lot, which is kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, right? which I get to see different parts of the world, <laughs> which is not bad. I mean, it, it's a great gig. How's the book tour going? Very well. I mean, I've done eight or nine different cities and tri-clubs and corporations, and that's been great. Uh, doing the signings in the merchandise stores at, at the Ironmans that I'm at, and they're selling it everywhere. Uh, you know, it's doing very well on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, and the audiobook is uh, doing very well. That's one. Well, t maybe for people that aren't familiar, can you give us a little overview of what the book's about and what, what inspires you to do it? The book's about Tales from Iron Man, the world's greatest endurance event. It's very simple. I've been inspired and motivated and, and a part of some incredible stories over the last 30 years. And, you know, I felt it'd be selfish of me not to share them. And I've had notes and diaries about them and and then you know 10 years ago I said I got to do a book five years ago I said I got to do a book and finally two years ago I kicked myself in the butt and said start putting it together yeah uh, and it was really a it, it not only cleansing of, of going back over these stories but being re-motivated and re-inspired and people are telling me that you know the book's making them cry and grown men are crying and or laughing, giggle laughing because some of the stories and it's just really what I've seen and been a part of and I wanted to pass it on. A lot of people know what these stories are and others are stories people have no clue about. Yeah. There are some people who have read the book that didn't even know that you remembered their name, that they've, yeah. they've read about themselves in your book and really had no idea that they were going to be in there. How, how did you keep track of all of these stories? You said you wrote about it in a diary, but was that the main source? Well, what would happen is I'd start writing about a story or, or have a theme, because I have chapter themes of healing and coping and transformation. So when I would think of a story, I'd start writing about it, and it was amazing how I would remember more and more as I kept writing. More people's names. Oh my gosh, I remember that person. I'd wake up at three in the morning and go, oh my God, a guy's name is Bill. I, you know, and I'd go <laughs> write it down and, and uh, I, I actually went through after I wrote the book. I have in the book, you know, well over 250 names in the book of people, in not all stories about them, but of people I remember, and they had a small influence in, in some of the motivation and inspiration. So it just started to come as I. The, it's an interesting progression of writing a book because it's never done. Yeah. I mean, the hardest part was leaving stories out that shouldn't have been left out but you only have so much room. Right. When did you start, when was your first race that you uh, announced for? Well, uh, you know, I, I announced races in the late 70s and the first triathlon was uh, the first professional triathlon at Solana Beach in 80. So ever since then, but Kona, the first Kona was 89. 89, okay, yeah. all right. And I know there's a uh, Ironman coming up pretty soon that sounds like a lot of fun right up your alley in Cork. Well, you know. That sounds pretty cool. Michael Joseph Patrick Riley being able to go to <laughs> Ireland and call the first Irish race. Uh, Ireland, you know, I called Galway 70.3 about five years ago. But to be invited to, to do Ironman Ireland in, in three weeks, uh, I can't wait. I bet. I can't wait. I bet that's, what's it like to do an Ironman that's its, it's first year in a place? I, I love, I do a lot of first year events and it's fresh, it's new. It's unexpected. People, especially spectators in the community, I love drawing the community in and, and I get to tell them what's going to happen and, and what these athletes are going through. And they listen to you like they're listening to a college professor for the very first time. I mean, it's amazing how they suck it all in. Right. So my, my pleasure in, in announcing that race is introducing all of County Cork and Southern Ireland and the whole country of Ireland to what Iron Man and, and what the passion of Iron Man is all about. Yeah, I think that's great. So we're doing Boulder this weekend. Yeah. What number is Boulder? Do you know what number of Iron Man races uh, you called out? Yeah, you I just, it's 100, this is my 185th Iron Man. Really? Wow, yeah. so, I mean, <laughs> so let's say even times, when I say it, I go, oh my God. Times two or let's say average 2,500 athletes, that's a lot of people, that's a lot of names. Uh, right. Do you think about that, how many people you've called in? Well, I, I have it in the book. We, we, it's between 350 and 400,000. Wow. That's, that's 
a big city. So all I need is all I need is 350,000 people to buy the book, and I'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in I'll be in Michelle Michelle Obama territory if that right? happens. Right, right, right. What have you learned about the book process? What do you, What do you think of it? Well, you know, I, it, it, you always should learn something new in your life every day, and and that was a real learning curve because the publishing business is completely different than anything I've ever done. I've been in technology and sales, and so there was a learning curve. And my son, who's got his own marketing company, uh, helped me with the process, and we discovered a lot of things. We made some mistakes and then corrected them and came back, but we self-published because we felt that was going to be our best way to be able to push the book out because I felt nobody could sell the book better than me. Uh, publishers didn't really get it. Now I have publishers calling and go, wow, I wish I hadn't have uh, not gone with you because they read the book and go this is something else so maybe book two a publisher will be with me I don't know yeah. or so, I'll just self-publish again so does your son still call races with you no he doesn't he's no. you know he's got a big endurance marketing company and he is he's accentuating on that and but he comes to Kona and does the music with me uh, takes care of that all day long so it's not it's not his thing not his passion so which is fine well, we always enjoy, enjoy seeing you, Mike, and Ironman Boulder is our home, home turf, of course, yeah. and we'll be in Kona. I look forward to seeing you there in a few months. And Yeah, I think I'll go to Kona. You think? Oh, good. Awesome. People I wish always, I could go to Ireland. People always ask me, so, your schedule, are you going to go to Kona? I go, duh. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if I don't do anything else, I'll be in Kona. <laughs> right, right. All right, well, thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks, Thanks, Mike. guys. All thanks right. for having me on. Thanks, Ed.